Germany with two people of the nine or ten in the world that received the Pritzker Prize for their life's work in architecture with Hans Holein and James Sterling and uh, Matthias Ungers as well. Uh, he started his own firm in 1978 and in 1986 received the research prize from the Foundation of Architects of the Architectural Association and Federal Republic of Germany. He won an international competition in California for the Hemet Civic Center. Dolly Parton lives in Hemet, and he got to meet Dolly Parton as, as, and he got to meet Dolly Parton as part of that experience. Um, he won the, <laughs> he prepared all this for me. He won the gold medal uh, at the Second World Architecture Congress in Argentina. Coincidentally, I happened to receive this in the mail today from Argentina. And right here in the very beginning, it does point out Befix Oyeren from Belgium on the first page as recipient of the gold medal. His works were selected uh, by the People's Republic of China to be in their permanent uh, exhibit and to travel around the country. Uh, his work has been exhibited all over Europe, uh, Spain, France, Germany, and uh, a recent exhibit of his, uh, uh, recently and soon to appear, uh, his work will be exhibited in Rome where a book about it will also appear. And future exhibits in the next two years of the work of Vefik Sorian will appear in Belgium and in Turkey and in Argentina and Sydney, Singapore, and all around the world. Um, we're very fortunate to have Vefik Sorian with us as a visiting professor of architecture uh, for the remainder of the quarter. He's a, he's a very sensitive architect. He's, a, he's, pardon me, the remainder of the semester. I'm sorry. Semester. Thank you. He's a, he's a very sensitive architect. He has a very good sense of humor. Um, I don't know whether his sense of humor will carry him over the fact that we messed up his slides and now he might be a little upset. So before he begins, I thought, what could we do? to make this poor, very talented Belgian architect who was so excited about coming to Muncie uh, feel better about the experience. Where's Daniel Gans? Is he here? Daniel? Oh, he's upstairs. Well, I have the same thing for him that I have for you right here in my pocket. Uh, Daniel Gans is upstairs so that those of you down here will have difficulty seeing him, is the office manager for Vefik in Belgium. And Saturday he came here with Vefik slides just for this exhibit. So I wanted to say that we're really very happy to have Daniel Gans and Vefik here, and we want them to remember their experience in Muncie. So I purchased at considerable expense, which the department will even pay for perhaps, these pins emblazoned with the word Muncie, and below it it says America's hometown. And. Uh, <laughs> I am really honored to present to you uh, someone who I'm sure is, is at a very critical stage in his career, a stage where his work has now become recognized all over the world. We're very happy to have Vefik Soren with us for the remainder of the semester and especially this evening. Thank you very much. <laughs> I have asked at first my apologies that I don't speak perfect English. I thank you very much for all the warm welcome that you gave me, all the faculty members in, in this country. Oh. It's okay? Yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah. Uh, we have a small office of eight persons in Brussels. Uh, we make all kinds of projects, big or small. 
Uh, we make these projects with small sketches. We have a method of work and uh, we never jump stamps when we consider our projects. We use also academical rules in our work because we believe that any art without academical rules, without subject and without objective is in some of condemned to disappear. We use geometry, for instance, to our services and we never have been slave of geometry because we believe that architect and geometry are two different disciplines, for instance. All the drawings, perspectives, color layouts are production of our office. We never ask help to the specialist except for the building techniques. Uh, we also never had the opportunity to make commercial build projects and uh, finally we work very close to the architectural schools which I think any professional office has to do. Uh, I'm sorry that I will talk to you this evening about my projects because I think most easier thing to do for an architect is to make a criticism over the work of other colleagues. I think uh, the European studies, I mean Western European studies, have always been important for the American architects, and they still are. And also American studies are very important for the European architects. The both cultures are closer to each other than to any other culture. Uh, but the affinities of both parts of Atlantic are different. So I think you cannot make an European project in America and vice versa. Uh, there is an exhibition here in first floor and there are, they had to be have four projects of our, but they are available there tomorrow probably. Eh? Uh, <laughs> exposed, uh, uh, exposed there are two European and two American projects. Uh, I will uh, not talk you this evening about these projects which are exposed, but about two other projects which are not exhibited. Uh, I have intended to show you two projects of mine, one project in Brussels in an urban context, and one project in California, and I hope to show in how different way we aborted both projects. And I hope to transmit you a message and the philosophy of my work. And uh, I read all this news. <laughs> I, th I think architecture and urban design are two subjects inseparable one from the other for the future of our cities. The architects today are less and less concerned with big urban design commissions. So I believe we have to find more and more urban solutions for a smaller context. The country where we are living and working, we are no any more concerned with urban planning because there is no area to planning anymore. And more and more cities are abundant. We are more concerned with urban revitalization projects. Uh, the first project uh, I will show you is uh, a project in Brussels in the urban context, uh, which uh, uh, houses the em is an embassy project uh, uh, who houses uh, nearly 2,500 square meter different uh, service surfaces. Decide between uh, adjoining buildings is located in the central part of Avin Louise, which you see in this slide. Near the corner, which is uh, 
did we have a light? Is it? How do it works? Uh, our site is just here, and this avenue, avenue which is here. So we are just in the middle of this avenue, and uh, this is Rue Les Broussard. This is the Church of the Trinité, and this is Place Flaché. And our site is between two streets, one avenue and one small street in big side. Uh, at the rear, the site looks on the Rue Lens, a street which leads to Rue Rose Brewster and runs parallel with Avenue Louise. The prestigious Avenue Louise was built in the last century, about 1864, to link up the city center with the Bois de la Cambre. In order to give the city an avenue, worthy of its role as the capital of Belgium. The avenue is 55 meters wide. The buildings erected, uh, the buildings leaning, it can be virtually be divided into two categories. First are the buildings erected prior the Second World War, dating back mainly to the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century. These are residential buildings, mainly houses. Second, the post-war build, post buildings, office blocks and apartment buildings, which are not of very great interest from the architectural viewpoint. Built by property developers with commercial aims in mind often with glass and concrete curtain wall facades. At the time, when, we project, when the project was to visit the city of Brussels, had not given planning permission for any building work in Avenue Louise for 13 years. In addition, it had deliberately held up the applications for planning permissions, which are then in the pipeline in order not to damage the avenue's image in any further and to preserve the old buildings. Our plot of land is 23 meters wide and 41 meters deep. We opted to site the embassy and its departments on the Avenue Louise side, while the Consulate General is on the Rue Lens side. Both the embassy and consulate look on to an inner garden. The plot of land is between two buildings, each belonging to one of two categories, which we have established for the buildings on Avenue Louise. The neighboring buildings on the south side is a large old family townhouse. The neighboring building on the north side is a post for apartment building. The city architects and the central town planning department were insistent that we should find a mean of integrating the new building architecturally between the two. We had established that the buildings in the first category of Avenue Louise almost all ended with a marked horizontal element. Just short of the roof, that the verticality of the openings was predominant and that their architectural style was domestic. A central term is always to be found on the facade too. In our project, it was a question of, our, of office buildings and we wished this to be clearly apparent in the language used. Now, for these types of buildings, institutional or office, Brussels is not a city of roofs, like Paris is. The big insurance buildings near the central station of Brussels, for example, end with a balustrade and the roofs is not visible. 
It's more like London. Those we designed a style of architecture in which the front of the built-out facade, sort of Oriel window, it chose the first category's type of the facade and is on the same scale as neighboring buildings on the south side. At the back of this facade, there is a facade similar in dimensions to those of the post-war buildings, seven levels, like the neighboring building on the north side. We do have a sort of shifting of facade onto different plans. The Oriel window, starting on the first floor and on four levels, ends with a glass roof reminiscent of the attic roofs found in houses, a sort of high-tech attic roof. The openings in this part of the facade are vertical. This oriel window creates a sort of dialogue with the neighboring building on the south side. This dialogue between gables exists in Brussels. Notably in the nearby Rubai. The first floor of the oriel window is a sort of piano nobile. We inspired us by Palazzo Vidoni Caffarelli of Raphael in Rome. This floor houses this floor houses the embassy's function and exhibition rooms. We also sought, by means of this oriel window, to create a sort of emblem for the embassy. The facade, taken as a whole, has a base level in stone, the bottom cross being in granite, and the main body of the building horizontally is expressed throughout two alternating strip courses of different tonalities, connected by a holy splice in order to contrast with the neighboring building on the south side. The main body of the building ends with a large cornice which links all the different parts together and above which a setback floor rises with a gable roof on top. There's a building with a base a body and the top is produced. On the ground floor of Avenue Louise, there is the entrance to the embassy, surmounted by a high-tech glass and steel canopy. And the entrance to the culture and tourism with a large display window. Now, the Rulance facade in this street, which is less characteristic from the architectural viewpoint, the facade of Consulate General Building comprises two parts linked by a stone base. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, yeah. <laughs> oh. So, uh, in this street, which is less characteristic from the architectural viewpoint, the facade of Consulate General Building comprises two parts linked by a stone base. The neighboring building on the north side, which stands on the street corner of Rio Espoussa, borders the site with a tall, narrow, windowless element, which acts as a wall top. We rested visually on this sort of veil, a polygonal shaped building housing the Consulate General Departments. The main body of this building ends with the top floor and the large cornice cased in wood. This top floor and moreover the street corner, wall top of the neighboring building and polygonal tower can be seen from Place Flagey, which is on a lower level than the site. The aim was to establish an urban reference to the old radio television tower erected on this square 
and which still houses the Maison de la Radio and the Institut Superior d'Architecture, La Cambre, La Cambre State Institute of Architecture. Smart and up the way in Avenue Louise, create a transition between the buildings which border our side, the tall building on the north side and the low building on the south side. The other main body of building is low, so as to fit in with the level of the neighboring building on the south side. It has a gable facade. On the ground floor, the entrance to the car park, on two level, lower ground floors, and the ramp providing access to the Consulate General can be seen. On the first floor, which is the ground floor from the avenue side, there is the facade of the consular services room, and on the second floor, there is the kitchen's facade. We sought to make the entrance to Consulate General as conspicuous as possible, since it will be the everyday entrance for the public, with 300 to 350 visitors a day expected. This entrance must be unmistakably visible from Rue Les Pousseurs, where the nearest tram stops are to be found. The ramp facing Rue Les Pousseurs leads to the portal at the entrance to the consulate located on the first floor of the polygon. The whole of the portal reaches up two levels. Stone facing further emphasizes the cohesion of the Bezran portal and kiosk where the entrance to the car park is located. This facing is the same as that of the base level of Avenue Louise. There is also the same bottom course in granite. The upper part of the two, of two facades is also incidentally faced with the same material. Now, the facade looking on the inner garden. And this is the rear facade of the avenue side building. The facade comprises two, comprise two parts. Uh, yes. <laughs> on the south side of the facade at ground, which is the right one here uh, at your right, you look. On the sides of the facade at ground floor level, a portico with stone columns and a steel and glass roof can be seen, as can a large window dispensing daylight to the lobby over a height of two levels. The windows of the office floors are functional, and their arrangement produce a formal effect. The north side of this facade is of the same architectural style as the facade of the polygon opposite. There is a casing and a cornice in wood here too. The aim was to. Tu peux revenir à cette façade qui est en colère. Merci. The uh, aim was to create a dialogue between two facades. Now, at your left is the rear facade of the Reliance building, this is of the Consulate General building. In the facade of the main but of the lower building, the kitchen wall is blind, mainly receiving zenithal light. On the ground floor, which is the first floor in relation to Rulans, three archways with semicircular arches of increasing size illuminate the Consular General's Consular Services room. The door leading to the garden, which is to be found in one of the sides of the polygonal tower, is diagonal opposite to the center of the garden. A fountain is planted. Now, uh, we can probably show a plan. The two buildings are wholly linked up at basement level. On the ground floor, they communicate via a corridor. And on the first floor, via a veranda. The staff car parks and entrance for deliveries to the kitchen are located in the basements. 
On the ground floor of Avenue Louise building, the entrance to the embassy is a sort of Brussels-style carriage getaway, which we call entre cocher, which opens onto a lobby with a reception desk, clock room, and view over the garden. This lobby partially occupies two levels in height. The culture and tourism office has a separate entrance. In the room, there are counters, a partial mezzanine floor and entrance, and the view over the garden throughout the portico. On the Rulan side, at the same level, which is here in the first level, the building houses consulates, receptions, receptions area, and the consular services rooms. The exhibition and reception rooms are located on the first floor of the Avenue Louise building. At the same level, on the Rulan side, second floor, are the staff restaurant and kitchen. When receptions are held, the restaurant area can be used as an extension to the reception area, areas. The main entrance to the garden is at this level. To the central pergola, which links up the two buildings. The last staircase leading to the garden is located in the axis of the letter center. So the garden is not turning to both buildings, but he is access to the pergola. There are offices on the upper floors. The consulate's meetings room is on the top floor of the Roulance polygon. The top floor of the Van Louise building is a technical floor. Now, uh, the next project is uh, an American project, which is another context. Uh, the city of Hemet is located east of Los Angeles in the Riverside County, some 100 miles from the California metropolis. It is in a favorite position, which can be said to be cosmic in San Jacinto Valley. Surrounded by mountains, reaching more than some 10,600 feet at their highest point, and has a very hot and dry climate. To the east of the city of Hemet, the Indian reserve of Soboba occupies the western slopes of the San Jacinto Mountains on the opposite side from Palm Springs. To the south of the city, there is the big Ramona Reserve. The city of Los Angeles, which cannot extend any further north, south, or west, is gradually growing to the east and contributing to a steady increase in the population of Hemet where some 75,000 people currently live. This situation prompted the city of Hemet to set up a new civic center geared to the requirements of its inhabitants in the year 2000. The objectives and the program drawn up by the municipality provides for the construction of the following new buildings, city hall, police department, fire department, library, Arts and Crafts Center, and extension of the existing neighborhood center. The restoration and transformation of two existing buildings, the Santa Fe train station, and McCool House, the oldest home in the city. The provision of commercial areas, 600 ground level parking areas, underground car parks being out of the question, with the exception of those of the police. We added to the program the adaptation of an exhibition hall in an existing building 
located on the north side of the site. The building of a small theater for various types of entertainment, films, theatrical performances, lectures, etc. The layout of this 223 square feet of buildings program by the city of Hamed involves the development of a 32 acre plot of land which it owns in the middle of the town. The city of Hamed, like many American towns and cities, is laid out in a regular pattern. The axes which are in line with the four cardinal points divide up rectangular blocks. The only break in this orthogonality is the Santa Fe Railroad, which cuts across the city diagonally. The Florida Avenue. Uh, facing southwest is the city's busiest thoroughfare. It is a major commercial avenue carrying heavy traffic and located near one of the roads linking up Los Angeles and Phoenix, Arizona. State Street, another main trophy, faces north-south. Uh, to the town of San Jacinto, the city of Hamed has kept little of its past and has no monument at, at present. It can be said, overall, plots of land in Hamed have been developed primarily with commercial aim in mind. The idea behind the project was suggest to the city a method enabling it to the plan the development of the site over the next 20 years. Our experience in Belgium showed us that all thought construction work is private in parks. Buildings tend to invade them in digested form. Hence, in order to avoid any subsequent confusion, we saw throughout the layout of buildings and gardens to determine right from the start of the project those parts of the land to be built on and those to be kept for the park. The project was divisible in such a way that it could be implemented in phases. We also produced a variant, which is a more com economical alternative to the project. Careful consideration was given to urban projects and their treatment and underpins the options chosen for the Hemet project. The park like the garden, aspires to be an image of the world. It is a form of organization of the world. But the 20th century has proved unable as yet to develop its own specific art of laying out gardens. In Europe, public gardens modeled on formal Italian and French gardens designed to serve as a setting for and continuation of baronial halls, reflect the image of the world and that of the political social organization of another area. Expressions of the grandeur of power, they no longer meet the needs of modern people. At the present, they are empty for lack of public amenities. In order to avoid this pitfall, the project offers a park of modern design in which public amenities have an important place. They suggest activities and attract a population whose leisure time is increasing in amount. We designed not a garden imitating nature but a site which is recognized and accepted as having been laid out by man. Perceived as a total area, 
It contrasts with the organization of the surrounding urban environment, while at the same forming an integral part of the fit. Instead of a single large building, we opted for several different buildings. The following reasons justify this choice. Respect for the typology of the buildings. They are cultural, institutional, commercial, etc. Allowing them not only to be differentiated from one another and within the surrounding urban fabric, which are domestic architecture, but also to be given their due prominence. The possibility also of building in plazas. In the project, the building in plazas are not laid out in a line along the side, the streets bordering the side. Trees and parking spaces take this place, but are transferred inside the park well away from the traffic, especially from the particular heavy traffic on Florida Avenue. Nor did we attempt to recreate in the park a European urban scale, fringed by an unbroken line of buildings, as this type of square has been a failure in the USA. We sought another freer, more pleasant layout with the stirring of buildings from one end of the site to the other. This layout also enabled pleasant walks across the site to be incorporated. We wanted to make an iconography of our urbanism. There was a buildings on our site. Now I will talk about the buildings, how they are layouted on the, on the site. In this project, we try to represent metaphorically the affinities of the city's inhabitants. All the public buildings are located in the huge central area, with the exception of the city hall, which is on a smaller side to the north. Priority is those given to the people. Political power is at its service and not vice versa. The governing idea is apparent in the treatment of the central square-shaped part of the project. It is raised like a stage on which a theatrical performance can take place. There is a pergola in the center which emphasizes the grid theme of the American city and links up two existent buildings. Neighborhood Center and McCool House. This pergola is the link up point of the axis of the project, whose elements are balanced around it. Its cross-shaped design forms a wide esplanade, a meeting point, a sort of Las Ramblas, which brings California's Hispanic origins to mind. The pergola, which forms a non-plan arcade, is reminiscent of an important feature of town planning, of our town planning, I would say, the covered arcades of 19th century. The square-shaped park lends the project its regular appearance and thus enables free reign to be given to the layout of the parks and buildings around. An artificial lake, artificial lake runs right across the center. Plants and animals represent life, while at the far ends, fountains and fire symbolize the energy of the inhabitants and the economic development of their city. My Hemet grew up as a result of the building of a dam. Different buildings are seated around the park. The existing neighborhood center and McCool House I just show you. 
And the other buildings are the library, art and crafts, police department, and fire department. This is a library building seen from here, from the west. Show some. Uh, in this uh, lecture, I didn't want to speak in detail of the buildings, but just show with them. We had to make also plans of each one of buildings. This is the library. The next one uh, is the Art and Craft Center. He is turning to the mountains. We want to make something Indian. The next, the next, this is the police department, which is there. Police department is easily accessible from the road and has a curved entrance because the curved forms are multidirectional, can be seen from overall, so it makes easier for the public. This is a fire department. Car parks covered by trees are located on the outer edges of the site. These tree constructions accentuate the regular appearance of the project and create a hard soft relationship with the buildings already erected on the land around the site. The railroad's diagonal route was preserved as a reminder of the historic part played by railroads in the economic development of the United States. The L-shaped city hall faces the mountains. Its boundaries are marked off by two plazas. The, uh, the French Provencal Plaza to the north and the Ceremonial Plaza to the south. This is the French Provencal Plaza and this is Ceremonial Plaza. The three linear French Provencal Plaza with fountains installed is intended for passive recreational use, play and dance, while in the ceremonial plaza, which is also commemorative, there is a special wall for inscriptions. Between the city hall and this place of contemplation, a reflecting pool stretches out like an Indian bow. A campanile, which is oversized, in relation to the plaza, over which it towers, provides the conception of verticality missing in the city. It is a city center's landmark. As a vertical component, it creates a cosmic relationship between the sky and the earth. At the other southern end of the site is the existing Hemet station. This is still City Hall. These are the plans. Yes, uh, in the center is, is the Hemet uh, railway station, which we propose should become the city's information center with parking spaces for buses. In the same area, to the north of the station, it is planned to build a theater in order to not to spoil the tempo of the surrounding urban fabric with an elevated building. The idea of a sunken theater in an ornamental pool came to the fore. The essential value of water is therefore issued in this second pool, which reflects and brings, so to speak, the image of the surrounding mountains into the site. The water, which is higher than the street level, overflows by gravitation onto the south side, thus creating the illusions that the pool is a cube of water. 
stores are set up on the marketplace. Between Harvard Street and State Street, extended Harvard Street's commercial activity right into the park. We want to bring, this is a very commercial road, and we continue with retail into the park. This is also some of the affinities of the people living there, commerce. All the entrances to the site are expressed by gates, which tell users that they are entering a specific area of the city. On the Florida Avenue and on State Street, banners announce the various activities organized in the Civic Center. The paving of the roads crossing the site is different, so as to slow down the traffic. This is it. Thank you very much. This is a night view of uh, Thank you very much. I'm sorry, I had to read, but normally I speak free in French, but it was too risky in English, probably. That is the reason why I. I think it might be um, appropriate if uh, Professor Sawyer had the opportunity.